Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be continuing our conversation that we started in our last video. In this video, we're going to be reviewing Unit 8, Topic 8, Psychological Perspectives and Treatment of Disorders. Behavioral therapies use the ideas of learning and conditioning in order to change behaviors. These therapies focus on treating the behaviors, not the internal or mental causes behind a person's condition. These therapies work best at treating a specific behavior behavioral problem, like phobias or compulsion. One example of a therapy that uses classical conditioning techniques focus on individuals who are wetting the bed. This therapy was developed by Over Holbert Moore. Moore had kids sleep on a pad that was sensitive to liquids. If the kids wet the bed, they would be woken up by an alarm that was near the bed. This resulted in the kids associated going to the bathroom with waking up. Other classical conditioning techniques include exposure therapies and aversive conditioning. These therapies use a conditioning technique of counter conditioning, which means they are attempting to change or counter the conditioning that already exists. The goal here is to get rid of an unwanted response to an old stimuli. Exposure therapy has a few different methods that are used to effectively treat different anxieties. In our last video, we talked briefly about exposure therapy and how it involves repeatedly exposing an individual to the stimulus that frightens them in a controlled setting. The main type of exposure therapy is called systematic desensitization. In this situation, your therapist would help you learn deep muscle relaxation, and then would have you imagine that you're in a situation with your phobia, and when you start to feel that anxiety, they would guide you into a state of relaxation. Repeated practice of this would eventually turn into real life practice until you've overcome your phobia and are confident in yourself. Some phobias that cannot have a real life practice because they are dangerous or too difficult to recreate will utilize virtual reality exposure therapy. This will use VR headsets and have you confront those fears after you've been properly trained to use the relaxation techniques and gone through the proper amount of time and practice. Another behavioral therapy is aversive conditioning. The point of this conditioning is to help you avoid a harmful stimulus, like alcohol for example. The process is to pair the stimulus with an unpleasant response, which will hopefully help change the behavior to avoid that stimulus. An example would be if an individual was trying to stop drinking alcoholic drinks, the therapist could put a drug in the alcoholic drinks that would cause the individual to become nauseous every time they drink alcohol. That way they would associate being sick with alcohol. Or another example could be an individual who's trying to stop biting their nails. The therapist could have them wear nail polish that tasted horrible. An important thing to note here about this therapy though is that when an individual leaves the therapist's office, they know that they can get alcohol that will not make them nauseous. And so the therapy is not always effective on its own. Operant conditioning techniques are also under the category of behavioral treatment. Remember in our last video, we talked about a token economy. This is an example of operant conditioning technique where the person is rewarded when they do the desirable behavior. The goal here is to reinforce that behavior to increase it in the future. Critics of this treatment wonder how long a person will continue doing the desired behavior once the reward is gone. The question here is the treatment truly effective enough for a person to continue it, which we can see really depends on the behavior and the person if they feel intrinsically motivated to continue after the therapy. Up next is cognitive therapies. The two main therapies in this category are rational emotive behavior therapy and Beck therapy, also known as cognitive therapy. We talked about these in the last video, and the main theme of these therapies is that in order to treat the disorder, we need to change the person's inner dialogue and irrational ways of thinking. The words we say in our head matter, and they can influence other situations in our lives. This type of therapy works best for treating anxiety, PTSD, and depression disorders. Learning to talk back to negative thoughts can can reduce rates of depression, but it was also shown in studies to enhance the learning of athletic skills. Positive self-talk helped players focus on their skills and remove doubt from their mind. Cognitive behavioral therapy combines techniques to help change people's thoughts as well as behaviors. This is a popular form of therapy and the cognitive aspect helps people recognize their irrational thoughts and change the ways of which they think while the behavioral aspect will help practice better behaviors and use behavioral techniques. Some disorders that benefit from this approach are anxiety, depressive disorders, and bipolar disorder. For example, an individual who has social anxiety could see a therapist who could use CBT to help change their negative thoughts. Instead of the individual thinking that they're not likable and that they are annoying, the therapist could help them think of themselves as a great person, worthy of friendship, while at the same time practicing different strategies to help the individual approach people. CBT has also been effective for helping those with with OCD by helping them recognize their obsessive thoughts and use cognitive techniques to change the way they think about those thoughts.
not, which helped prevent the compulsive behavior that normally follows them. They would also instead practice a different positive behavior after having their obsessive thoughts, which would further help the effectiveness of the treatment. For example, if a person was leaving their house and locked the door behind them, then felt the obsessive thought to check the lock again, they would tell themselves, I'm having an obsessive thought. They know this because of the activity in their brain. It's due to the OCD they have, and they saw it on a PET scan. Then instead of checking the lock, the person could go for a walk or sit in their car and listen to their favorite music. The research on this method shows that after CBT, many people have improved symptoms. Next, we'll talk about the psychodynamic approach and the humanistic approach, which are both types of insight therapies where a person needs to understand themselves and their motives in order to resolve the issues they face. This is unlike the therapies that we've talked about so far that have focused on changing behaviors or removing symptoms. These therapies are best at treating depression disorders. Psychodynamic therapy is an evolved form of psychoanalysis therapy. The goal of this therapy is to discover the unconscious motives and childhood experiences that shape who the person is and to understand why they're having the symptoms that they are having. This form of therapy is probably what comes to your mind when someone mentions therapy and is what is most commonly depicted in movies and TV shows. The therapist is sitting across from you face to face and asks you questions in order to get to the root of your thoughts and feelings, but they're focusing on what has happened to you in the past and trying to figure out how that has shaped your unconscious mind. Oftentimes, a therapist will use free association when trying to uncover the root of the problem. What the therapist will do is look for signs of resistance from the individual to see what's happening in the individual's unconscious mind. One thing to note that while this therapy is occurring, we may see positive or negative transference happen. This is when an individual will transfer positive good feelings onto the therapist or an individual will transfer negative and bad feelings onto the therapist. If and when transference occurs, the therapist will analyze the patient's thoughts and reaction. Today we can see that the psychodynamic therapy is shorter when compared to the psychoanalytic therapy. There also is a lot more of a focus on exploring and understanding why individuals avoid certain thoughts, feelings, or memories. Humanistic therapies, on the other hand, do not focus on the past. They focus on your growth and your conscious thoughts. Therapy will help you grow by taking responsibility for yourself and gaining a deeper self-understanding. We talked about a client-centered therapy in the last video, but this is the main form of humanistic therapy to focus on for AP Psychology. The biggest difference for this therapy compared to other talk therapies is that this therapy is a non-directive, which means that the therapist does not give any advice or tell the individual what they mean. They just set up an environment where the individual can talk freely. A big part of this therapy is that when the therapist is letting the individual talk freely, they're actively listening, which is a technique where they intentionally listen carefully and restate what the client is saying in order to fully understand what is being said. Another important part of client-centered therapy is that the client has an environment of unconditional positive regard. This term may sound familiar to you. It means that the client will never feel judged and will be valued and cared for. In this environment, a person will have an improved self-awareness and self-worth. We can also see there are other psychologists who aim at preventing disorders from occurring by changing environments, empowering individuals, and building resilience. Resilience is our ability to adapt to difficult and stressful life experiences. When people can effectively cope with stress, they can learn to grow and overcome difficult life events. What is great is that a person can learn to build resilience and it can be fostered. Many people who have experienced trauma can even have post-traumatic growth. That is where they're happier with their life after being through the difficult experience and they appreciate things much more. All right, and that's it for this video. Now you know the drill. Answer the questions on the screen right now and check your answers in the comment section down below. As always, if you need some more help with AP Psychology, consider checking out my Ultimate Review Packet. It's a great resource that'll help you get an A in your class and a five on the national exam. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you online.